Okay, so what you should have seen, actually, is that the Euler characteristic comes out to be zero. Ah, so we finally found a shape whose Euler characteristic isn't two. For a second there, I was starting to think that all water-type shapes would have an Euler characteristic of two, uh, but that's not the case. So Homer did, but if even if I look at, so this, this is the three by three torus that we were looking at, um, that, the kind of triangular torus. If I use more, a larger grid, I still get the same thing actually, 900 minus 2700 plus 1800 is zero. So even with a different triangulation, I've, I still have a shape that gives zero. Uh, what's interesting is, I can also look at this teapot, which has, like the torus, it has a single handle here. So a single kind of uh, piercing, if you want to think of it that way. And if I look at these numbers, they, this minus this plus this is also zero. Let me just show you so you don't, if you can't do the mental math, which I can't probably either. Okay, you see that that's zero. All right, so, so now we, we found another shape that has zero as its order characteristic. Um, here's something called a two-hole torus. And it's, it's exactly that. It's a shape that has two of these piercings or two handles. Um, and if I look at these numbers, what I see is this minus this plus this is negative two. Okay, so, so now I'm starting to see all sorts of different stuff. You know, I started off thinking everything was had an Euler characteristic of two, but then I found some shapes that had an Euler characteristic of zero. And now I found a shape that has an Euler characteristic of negative two. So if you had to then guess, what would happen if I created an additional piercing? What do you think the Euler characteristic would be? So take a second and, and reflect on that. So no piercings or handles on Homer, Euler characteristic of two. Single handle or piercing? Like the teapot or the torus, or the characteristic of zero. Two handles, or the characteristic of negative two. And finally, three handles. Well, let's look. So we got this minus this plus this. And that's negative four. Okay, so what we are stumbling upon here is something called a topological invariant. What we're seeing is we have a number that, that does not really care about the geometry or the, the meshing that we choose. So this can be Homer or it can be an octopus or a cow. <laughs> we, still get, we still get a zero. Um, and it wouldn't matter if the cow was, was dancing and, and one of its legs was over here. Um, so, so basically, as long as I don't um, glue anything, so, so if I glued this leg to that leg, then that would suddenly be creating a handle. So as long as I don't glue anything or tear anything or create piercings, then I am not changing the topology, um, which to define that rigorously takes some time, but, but that's the basic idea. And um, what we've seen is that this number, the Euler characteristic, is a topological invariant. So it's a number that doesn't change if the topology doesn't change. So if there's no gluing, tearing, or piercing. Okay. Um, now to make this a little more explicitly about, to make the Euler characteristic be a little bit more explicitly about handles, um, I wanted to find something called genus. So I saw that the Euler characteristic was the number of vertices minus number of edges plus number of faces, and that's all along good. But we have this pattern where every time you add a handle, um, the Euler characteristic goes down by two. So what we can we can define something else called the genus. Um, it's such that the Euler characteristic is two minus two g, and that's it. So genus is really really the number of handles. Um, and so you can rearrange this, of course, and, and say that, that, well, the genus then is, is two minus the Euler characteristic quantity over two. Okay. 
this is actually um, one of the tasks you'll have to do on the next assignment, which is probably one of the easiest ones because it's just counting, and computers can count very well. <laughs> um, I'm not that good at counting, but a computer can. Okay. Um, cool. So that's the genus. So now I can, you know, what I can do is compute the Euler characteristic and then and then solve for G and say, okay, well, I think it, if it's watertight, it has that that number of handles. Um, this is less meaningful if this is not a watertight mesh. Um, so I guess I guess we should really assume um, that this is watertight mesh. Okay. And when I say mesh, I mean manifold mesh also. Okay. This text is too big. Let me make the text more reasonable. Okay. So that's my definition. Okay, so one more thing I want to show you that's kind of neat with the order characteristic. So let me define something called the connected sum um, of mesh A and B, which is denoted by A um, hashtag B. It's called the connected sum. So what a connected sum is, is you take a shape. Let's, let's see, here's my first one. Um, and then you take another shape. Well, yeah, let's make this look a little more 3D if we can. Yeah, we'll even give this, uh, yeah, we'll just make this kind of a weird torus. Okay. Um, and then I take another shape. So we'll make this one a little more sphere-ish. Um, so here's on the left, this is my A, this is my B. Uh, the connected sum of A and B is the result of taking a little piece of this and deleting it. So, so kind of not, not a piercing, but, but making a little boundary here. Um, so making a boundary is different from creating a piercing because remember the boundary is is these um, cycles with with a single edge. But actually, this doesn't have any boundary, even though it has piercings. There's no boundary because every single triangle here has exactly, or every single edge here has exactly two triangles on. You won't be able to find an edge that that has um, exa exactly one triangle. Well, look how cool that looks from the inside. Anyway. Um, Okay, so, but here I am going to create a boundary. So I'm going to create a little hole here. Um, and and I'll, I'll do it, create another hole on A. And what you do is you just glue this shape to this shape through the hole. So, so kind of make the exact same hole on both of them and then glue them together. Let's try to see what this operation does to the Euler characteristic. Let's try to examine what would be the Euler characteristic of the connected sum. So let's start by originally saying that the Euler characteristic of A was the number of vertices in A um, minus the number of edges in A plus the number of faces in A. Then the Euler characteristic of B it should be the number of vertices in B minus the number of edges in B plus the number of faces in B. Okay. Now the easiest way to do this in a discrete manner is to take a triangle out of each one of these. So I'll take a triangle out of A and let me be very explicit and actually draw the vertices in this triangle. Um, so I, I take a triangle out of A and I take the same triangle out of B and I will glue them together through the, through those triangles. Okay. Now when I glue, these three vertices and these three edges become one. Okay, so that, that's a key point here. Um, the other thing to notice is, well, in order to do this, I actually deleted the face on each of these, right? Before I glued them together on these edges and vertices that they share, um, I deleted the faces. So, First thing was, okay, the number of faces went down by one. Um, on both of them. Okay, so same thing over here. 
So I'm trying to track what happens to, to this Euler characteristic under this change. Okay, but, but then I told you that, that the number of edges actually gets identified. So, so these three edges now become glued and are the same as these three edges. And these three vertices on A are the same as these three vertices on B. So here's the little triangle I took out of A, here's the little triangle I took out of B. Um, so what I'm saying is that the number of, yeah, let's say that, that A really takes on the, the edges and vertices of B. So what I can say, that's like saying the number of edges in A actually decreases by three and the number of vertices in A also decreases by three. Okay, so those are the counts that we're keeping track of for the connected sum. So if I do this out, then what I see is that the Euler characteristic of A connected sum of B should be, so this is minus three, but then minus negative three, that cancels out. But I have a minus one and I have a minus one. So it's the Euler characteristic of A plus the Euler characteristic of B minus two. Okay, so here is an interesting identity. So I define the connected sum, and now here's my, my little lemma which is um, that um, is this. So, so we're saying that the, the um, Euler characteristic of the connected sum is the Euler characteristic of one plus the Euler characteristic of the other minus two. And here's the proof. So you just have to count things. Okay, so let's look at an example and I think it will shed some light on, on some of the things we were seeing. So if I do the connected sum of a torus with one hole and a torus with um, one hole. Well, that should be the Euler characteristic of the torus with one hole plus the Euler characteristic of the torus with one hole minus two. Well, the Euler characteristic of a torus with one hole or one handle is zero. So we see that this is negative two. Um, and I, I can keep going by induction. I can say, well, let me keep, uh, you know, I can take the connected sum Um, of two tori, and then do the connected sum of that with another one. Um, I was, yeah, I was kind of waffling on the parentheses here, but that's okay. Yeah, we, I'll make it, I mean, this is associative, but, but I'll say I do that first and then I glue another one. So that's, should be, you know, xt1 plus xt1 minus two plus xt1 minus two. So that would be negative two minus two, which is negative four. So this is gluing three tori together. So, so really what it's saying is when I look at this thing, this is the result of, of gluing three tori together. You can imagine I took a donut here, I glued it to a donut here, and then I glued them both to a donut here. Um, and then I kind of stretched them and, and, and moved them around a little bit, but I didn't change the topological properties of this. So this is some intuition on, on how that's working when you glue these, these handles to each other. Okay, so I want you to do just a quick exercise on this, thinking about what happens when you glue a sphere to something. So something with, with genus zero or, or, or the characters to two, what happens when you glue that. Um, and then I'll talk about one more topological property of shapes.